and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week, we're going to be comparing probably America's most popular high-value um, entry-level PRS optics. So we are talking about the Vortex Strike Eagle 5-25 by 56 and the Arkin EP5 5-25 by 56. So both of these optics have all the desirable features that you're looking for for PRS or even long-range shooting. So we're talking a 56mm objective, 34mm tube, tons of internal adjustment, and I mean tons, a hard type zero stop, a wide magnification range 5 to 25, long enough eye relief, and illumination. So both of these optics have it at a reasonable, very reasonable price, and they have ED glass to boot. The Vortex Strike Eagle comes in at about $700 US, and the Arcan EP5 comes in at about $564 US, so about $140 difference. Now, if you're interested in either of these optics, I will leave some links in the descriptions below for you so you can check out the prices, and also the links do help fund the channel. So thanks in advance. So let's start with the glass. So this is probably one of the most important things when we're going to be deciding on which optic is best. So let's take a look at the Vortex Strike Eagle. This is a 5G tower at about 2,000 meters. So as you can see, the image looks very sharp. This video is taken late in the day, a little bit in the evening, just so we can get the least amount of mirage from the sun, just so we can get as much sharpness as we possibly could. And this is a uh, barn at about 400 meters. So that was the Strike Eagle. Now the Arkin EP5. This is that same tower. And this is the barn. So which one did you think was sharper? Well, I'm gonna put two images side by side, two stills of that 5G tower without the name. Which one do you think is sharpest, the left or the right? <laughs> now here are the results. This is the Vortex, and that one is the Arcan EP5. Is it what you thought? Well, I went with the Arcan EP5. I felt, well, keep in mind, through the camera, it doesn't give you a real representation of what it looks like in real life. It is close, but it is not quite. It is pretty much as good as we can get it for a representation for a video. Now, I put these side by side, and my choice went with the Arcan EP5. So personally, I felt in my eyes, I was able to see that 5G tower a little bit sharper, a little bit better with the Arcan EP5. Now, that is pretty damn surprising considering it's $140 cheaper. Like, wow. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best choice. We have a lot of other things to go over to help you make your choice. Now, keep in mind, the glass difference is, is fairly minor. So it's, it's not maybe not your deciding factor, but it still should be considered as one of the main factors. Next, we have the eye relief. So the Vortex Strike Eagle has a 3.7 inch eye relief and the Arkin has 3.4. The fast focus eyepiece on the Vortex is very, very, very smooth. Like it is really, really nice. The Arkin EP5, it's very smooth, really nice, but just not quite as smooth as the Vortex. So a very minor detail, but usually that starts to be indicative of better quality control. But let's see more to that soon. Um, the magnification as well on the Vortex Strike Eagle, super, super smooth. Uh, the Arkin, very smooth, but just not quite as smooth. It's still not going to be maybe your deciding factor, but still. Now the field of view. So the Vortex at the lowest magnification of 5, these are both 5 to 25s, uh, has 24 Point has 24 feet at 100 yards, while the Arkin has 25. So the Arkin has a slightly bigger field of view at the lowest magnification. At the highest magnification, the Vortex has 5.2, and the Arkin has 4.9. So really, should that be your deciding factor? Absolutely not. These are such minor differences, they're, they're inconsequential. And next we have the Focus Parallax. So originally, when I bought the Vortex Strike Eagle, the, the Focus Parallax was really stiff. Like, I mean, like, I was like, oof, this is, like, really kind of difficult to turn. Um, it, with time, with exercise, it did work itself to be smoother, which, I mean, it just shouldn't be the case. I mean, at this, then again, at this price, you will occasionally see some things that are slightly stiff, and that's what we observed with the Vortex Strike Eagle. Now it's nice and smooth, but originally that wasn't necessarily the case. The Vortex Strike Eagle's Focus Parallax starts at 15, while the Arkans only starts at 25. This may be a deciding factor if you're shooting air guns or rimfire at very, very close range. Maybe. 
So the Vortex Strike Eagle goes 15, 20, 30, 50, 75, 100, 200, 300, 500, and infinity. The Arc and EP5 goes 25, 35, 50, 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, and infinity. Now, the Focus Parallax on the Arcan, on the other hand, is buttery smooth. It's, it's like ridiculously smooth. Really, really nice. And I personally do find with the size of the, uh, of the Focus Parallax, it's a little bit easier to turn. I mean, you just quickly grab and turn. While the Vortex, because it's kind of the same size as the Illumination, you have a tendency of kind of grabbing both and trying to turn, which, I mean, it'll, it'll adjust the Focus Parallax, but I feel it's just a little bit easier to turn the Focus Parallax on the Arc. Next, we have the turrets. So this is, we have a lot to unpack here. So this is maybe where we separate a little bit of the two. So I'll go over the similarities. Both have a ton of internal adjustment. The Vortex has like 110 MOA, 31, 32 mils. Same thing goes for the Arcan. So no difference in terms of total internal adjustment. They both have 25 MOA or 10 mils per revolution. Uh, the difference start to start with the Vortex having a lockable turret system. And obviously it's a little bit shorter. It's a shorter turret than the Arkan. The Arkan has a very tall, beefy type turret. Now, while the Vortex is beefy, it's just not quite as tall. Both have zero stop systems, which make them very, very desirable for the entry level PRS. Now, the biggest difference is probably the zero stop type system in the Vortex. So it has the rev stop type uh, zero stop system, which limits you to two revolutions. What does that mean? That means 47 MOA's worth of internal adjustment if you have the zero stop system engaged. Or if you're talking in mils, it's gonna be like, like 19 point something mils. So, or if, if you remove the zero stop system, obviously you get the full amount of internal adjustment. Now the Arkin has a very different type zero stop system. It doesn't eat up any of the internal adjustment. So you can use the full 32 mils or 110 MOA, which is, I guess a bit more desirable if you want to do a little bit of a, if you want to do more extreme long range rim fire or just even extreme long range. Now, before you decide, let's go take a look at the tracking on both of these. I'm going to skip the box test on both of these because they both did great. Where they distinguish each other a little bit more is in the tracking. The Vortex, if we're just going to look at where it goes closest to the 50 MOA, where it's supposed to be, it's a little bit further than where the Arkin was to its 15 milliradians. So, the Arkin was closer to 15 mils than the Vortex was close to the 50 MOA. Because this one's in MOA and this one's in mils. Why I didn't get them in both? Well, back when I was reviewing the Vortex Strike Eagle, I was more of an MOA guy and now I'm a milliradian guy. Hey, times change, people change. <laughs> so yeah, the Arkin tracked a little bit better. But keep in mind, provided things track the same all the time, that's really what's going to matter. You're going to validate your data at 200. You're going to know what it is. I guess it, what it means is when you're going to be using, let's say, a Kestrel or a rangefinder with a ballistic app, you might be slightly off. Yeah. And also, different units could vary. I only have a very small sample. I have one of each. If I had, like, 30 of each, that would probably give us a much more clear example of uh, how their tracking abilities. Next, we have the reticle. So this is really going to come down to personal choice. I think both reticles are pretty damn good. Uh, the Vortex has the EDR7C, which is very popular, and it's in the Vortex Viper PST, which is another optic that's super popular in the PRS industry. It just has a little less internal adjustment, a slightly better glass, or even with the Vortex Razor. So much better glass, better turrets, um, but still the same reticle you can use. So you can get used to it with this one and then graduate up to the more fancy or more fancier optics. Now the Arkin Optics has the VPR reticle, which is very similar from their MOA to their mill rating. It's, it's basically the same design. I really don't know if I like one or the other. I find them both very, very good, very, very useful reticles. So it's going to be personal preference. It's going to be up to you. Also, both of them have an illumination. So the Arkin has a has six illumination settings with an offsetting between each setting, which is a bit usually a bit more desirable. Both take a 2032 battery. Personally, I find the Vortex uh, a little bit easier to turn. It just feels a bit smoother to get from one to another. Now the warranty. So this, we have a lot to say about this. So obviously everybody knows about Vortex's lifetime, no questions asked warranty. It's, it's a great, great, great warranty all over the world. And all the world, I think, is where we're going to compare these. So if we were in, in the USA, then it's really not going to be a big difference. Although Vortex will cover you even, even if you run it over a truck, where I'm not sure if Arkin would do the same. But that's kind of beside the point. So 
if you're in the USA, I think if let's say one of these malfunctions, I think both companies are gonna cover you quite well. They both have a lifetime warranty. While if you're outside of the US, I mean, for the time being, so we're in 2022, Arkin has pretty much just started, I think it was like three or four years ago, and they've just managed to get back on top of demand. Like they were used to be months in back time just because they'd sell out so quickly. They would basically get a stock, they would already be sold months ago. So th these were a hot commodity. And I think they're currently only like a two week uh, delay before they ship your optic. So I think in the future, I think they'll have a better kind of supply system for the other countries. But at this time, you probably have a little bit better service in the other countries with Vortex. Whereas in the US, I think it's gonna be fairly comparable. But in the future, keep in mind, these things might change. So that's my comparison for the Vortex Strike Eagle to the Arkin EP5. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in purchasing either of these, I'm gonna leave some links in the descriptions below for you. Keep in mind, these links do help the channel. They do help fund the channel and keep me doing this as much as I can. So I really do appreciate the support and I will see you in the next review. Oh, and if you have any more suggestions of optics you want compared um, to other videos, other optics that I've done in the past, just ask and I likely still have them so I can still do a comparison for you. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.